This video is brought to you by Kinsta. Do you want to create custom Elementor-based headers for your website for free? That's normally a pro feature inside of Elementor. I'm going to show you how to do it for free in this video. Hi, I'm Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Before we get started, a quick word from our sponsor. With Kinsta's lightning fast infrastructure powered by Google Cloud, your site loads in a flash. It stays stable, even under heavy traffic. Enjoy automatic daily backups, free malware removal, a global CDN, and 24-7 support from real WordPress experts, plus a custom Cloudflare integration. Kinsta's intuitive dashboard makes managing sites easy, even for teams. Whether you're running a WooCommerce store, client sites, or a growing blog, Kinsta has your back. Want to try hosting that works and works fast? Try Kinsta today. Click the link in the description down below. This is a nice little website I threw together using the free version of Elementor. And the header just doesn't look great because we can't do headers in the free version of Elementor. And our footer is in the same shape. I'll fix the footer in a separate video. In this video, we're going to do the header. And we're going to use a plugin that allows us to use Elementor building blocks and features to create our header with the free version, which is awesome. Everything you see in this video is 100% free. So let's install this plugin and fix this header. Let's go into the dashboard, go to plugins and add plugin and look up Elementor Ultimate Add-ons. It used to be called Elementor Header and Footer Builder. It's pretty on the nose for what we're doing, but they changed the name because they expanded what it can do. This is the one we want. It has lots of good reviews, lots of installs, compatible with the current version, updated recently. It looks like it's a well-maintained, supported plugin. When you install this, something might go wrong. So it's always best to back up your site first. If you need help with that, I'll put a link to the tutorial in the description to help you back up your site and restore it. When you're ready to go, click on install now, then click on activate. You can skip all this by pressing the X up here, or you can click on get started to go through the walkthrough. I'll go through the walkthrough. There might be some interesting stuff in here. This add-on has a lot of features you might like for your Elementor sites, for the free version of Elementor, mind you. So here are all the different widgets that this add-on adds. You can activate and deactivate all of them by clicking these buttons, or you can do it individually, like so. The reason you want to do that is if you're never going to use breadcrumbs, don't load the files and the data for breadcrumbs. So you turn that off. This is going to help your site load faster. So you can go through and turn each one of these on and off. You're going to need some of these on to do what we're doing in this video, specifically navigation menu, site title, possibly site tagline that often goes in the header, depending which site you have site title for sure, not for sure, but often site logo goes up there. So I'm going to keep all of them on for this video and click on continue setup. And now we're all done. That's all it took. We can click on create header footer, but I'm not going to press this button in case you skipped this configuration. I'm going to show you how to get to the place where we make these things. We have a UAE menu item on the left here. This is the dashboard page. We also have a header and footer page and a settings page. We also have similar links up at the top here. So I'm going to click on header and footer, click on add new. I'm going to call this site header. For the template, I'm going to choose header. For the display on, I'm going to choose entire website. You can choose lots of different subcategories. All singulars, which are posts, all archives, which are things like categories and tags. You can have special headers for your 404 page, for your search page, for the blog page or post page, for the front page. You get the idea. You can also have different headers for people who are logged in or logged out. So if you wanted to have a login button when users are logged out and a log out button when they're logged in, this is where you could do that. You could have the same header essentially, just with that button change, log in and log out. And you just choose different options here and it'll show the correct one to the correct people. We're going to leave that as just select, which means we're not really, really selecting based on user roles. I'm going to leave enable layout for Elementor canvas template unchecked and then click on publish. And now I'm going to click on edit with Elementor right here. That's going to allow us to edit this site header with Elementor. Before we create our structure, I just want to show you the widgets that we have available. There's lots in here. Here's the ultimate add-ons widgets. So we have a retina logo. There's a copyright, that's something that would go in a footer, which is what we're doing in the other video that I referenced. I'll link to that in the card up above and the description down below possibly. And you can check out the footer creation video. We have a navigation menu that'll go up here, site title, site logo, you get a search bar, lots of options. So those are all the options that you come with the free ultimate add-ons plugin. I'll click on the plus icon here and the flex box option. And I'm gonna choose a two column layout 
like this. So we're gonna have the logo on the left and the navigation menu on the right. And if this isn't quite the right size, you can drag and drop right there to make it the right size, it's depending how you want it. I like to have it not go right to the very edge of the screen. So I usually choose content with box when I click on these six dots. You see that dotted line right there and right there? That's what boxed means. It's essentially gonna allow white space to be on either side of what we're building. If you choose full width, there will be no white space unless you add padding to an element. I'm gonna choose boxed to keep it in that white space area. You can even define a width here. I'm not going to. It'll help with responsiveness to not touch that. So I'm gonna add a logo up here. I'm gonna use the ultimate add-on add-ons. Let's add the site, let's add the retina logo actually, because my screen is a retina screen and retina logos really help. Let's choose the retina image. I'm gonna upload the WP Learning Lab logo. I'm going to add our alt text over here, cause that's smart. Our screen readers and accessibility, and I'll make that every one of those options as well, the same thing. And there we have our retina logo. I'm gonna choose a default image. I'll just choose the same one, no big deal. And I can adjust the size of this later if I want. I can shrink this down to make it just the size of the logo, but we can work with that in a little bit. First, let's figure out our navigation menu, which is the next step we want or the next piece we want for our header. Here's a navigation menu introduced with the ultimate add-ons plugin that we added in this video. And boom, there's a navigation. Let's stretch this out to make it all in one. It won't let us keep it there. So let's click on this little icon here. Let's change the width of this one. There we go, that's pretty good, right? Put it out to there. And let's align this to the right. You might be wondering where this menu is drawn from. Let's click on it and find out. So when you click on this, we can choose which menu you want to appear. This is set as the footer menu on this site. We also have a header menu, main nav, and a primary nav. Let's change to the header menu. That looks more appropriate for the header. If you want to add more menus or there isn't one, Click on this link right here. I'm gonna command click or control click to open a new tab. And it takes you to the menus area inside of your WordPress dashboard. And you can create a menu here. If you want to see a tutorial on how to create a menu, I'll link to that in the card above and the description down below, just in case you need help with that. But it's pretty straightforward. You just pick the pages you want. If you don't have the pages, you make them first by going to pages and then add page. You can make blank placeholder pages to start with and just add them to your menu. So you have your menu all, all figured out. Then you can add content to those pages later. But this is where you have your menus. There's the four that we saw a minute ago. And you can open each one, click on select, and then you can edit them. So that's a crash course on WordPress navigation menus. For a more thorough tutorial, check the card up above and the description down below. I want to make this logo aligned better. You can see it's a little higher than our menu here. So let's click on the column settings and See if we can center this. Well, that worked a little bit. It moved down, but is that enough? I don't know. Let's see if we can put it at the bottom. Is that better? I think that's better. If that turns out it's not better, click on these settings again. You can change the height of this item. So you make it a little higher just to get it in just the right spot. There's umpteen different ways that you can change where this appears. You can go to advanced and you can add padding on the top. Click this link. So you're adding padding just on the top. You can also add margin. There, like I said, there's, there's umpteen different ways. The correct one will depend on the situation and that just requires some experience. For now, just pick one, pick any one that works and use that one. Next up, you test this on tablet. There's our header on tablet and I don't like it that much. I'd rather have it be one flowing section. On phone, I don't mind this. Logo on top, menu on bottom. So I want to work on the tablet. I want to change these columns from being side by side to being stacked like they are on the phone. And that's as simple as clicking on the six dots here and changing our direction from horizontal row to column vertical. That puts those two columns above each other. Now I just got to change the width to be 100%. Currently they're smaller. Click on the PX and choose the percent sign and make it 100. Do the same thing for this one. Change this to 100 and there we go. That looks way better. Our phone is unaffected because Elementor is pretty fancy that way. And there's what our desktop version looks like. Now for me, the header is done. 
and you can add more widgets here. You can add any Elementor widget that you want to your header. Just add ones that make sense. Don't start putting videos up in your header. Don't start putting, I don't know, copyright up there. That doesn't make any sense. Don't put Google Maps in your header. It doesn't make sense either. So just do something that makes sense and looks good. And then once we have that completed, make sure you click publish. Then if we go out to our website, I think we're almost done, but not quite. No, we are completely done. So it replaced the one that was there. I thought we might have to change this page layout to canvas, which I'll show you how to do in just a minute. Now we have our header navigation right there. If you want more space, you can go back into your header here, go to the container itself, go to advanced, and maybe add some padding on the top, maybe 30. 30 on the bottom, just to have a little buffer space so it's not so squished up there. Look at that, that's much better. And then if you have your the old menu there or something else that used to be a menu or something, if you wanna get rid of that, go to Edit with Elementor inside of the page that you're editing. You might have to do this on a page by page basis depending on how your theme is set up. But you want to go to the gear icon scroll down and change the page layout to something else. So you're gonna to wanna to have Elementor canvas or full width. In my case, default worked as well, but canvas and full width can potentially get rid of other headers and other menus that are being put in there by the theme. So try those out, see if any of those fixes your problem, and then you'll have a Skookum header on every page. Let's prove that to ourselves. Let's see if it's on every page. So we're on the home page here. Let's see if we have another page. We must. Let's go to the About Us page. There's our header. The About Us is clearly not finished, but our header menu is there. How about Adoptable Pets? It's there too. How about if we go responsive? Let's shrink this down. Let's see what happens to our menu as we shrink it down and moment of truth. Oh, there we go. It's not quite uh, adjusting in this range quite where I want it. I like the everything to stay in the center like the logo is. And then even smaller to the phone and even tinier. I don't know what this would be. A flip phone. So let's see if we can change that or fix that menu sliding over. That should be, I think, straightforward. Okay, here we are. Back to here go to the tablet, which is where the error is happening. Click on this box for the column settings, if I can get it. Go to layout and choose justify content as center and align items also as center. I think one of those or having both of those for good measure should do it. So now let's expand this again, refresh the page, let's shrink it down. And there you have it, the menu hamburger icon stays in the middle. Of course, when you click on that, it shows the menu options. And that's how we can create a header for free for any Elementor website using Elementor widgets. If you got value from this video, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button to let me know. And then check out this video on the screen right now, which is similar to this one. It's how to create a footer for the free version of Elementor. Make sure you check that out and I'll see you there.